Okay, this is a sending unit or fuel module, whatever you want to call it, for a 2000 seventh generation Toyota Celica GTS. You can see that the fuel pump is located in there. You can see the and you can see this is a fuel sending unit. Okay, so this car was originally not the fuel gauge was not working. And as you know for the Celicas, the fuel gauge is digital on the dash. Okay. So you can see here the three wires. Okay. Going up from the fuel module here to here. And you can see the triangular shape wiring receptacle right there. That is where the wiring harness plugs in. So what I'm going to do here is looking at the factory service diagram, which I will link in the comments. Okay. All right. You can see the fuel sender, the three wires, goes not to the instrument panel cluster, not to the gauges, but it goes to the body ECU. Okay. So the body ECU receives the fuel information, and there must be a link from the body ECU to the fuel, to the, to the fuel gauge or the... Uh, instrument panel cluster or what Toyota calls the combination meter okay this is on page DI 588 and I will leave a link to the service manual okay so I have my digital ohm meter let's do some testing all right okay so let's hook it up to the middle wire and we'll hook up to one of the wires Okay, and let's, let's do a resistance test here. I figure someone on the internet is looking for this information. Okay, so you see how I have this hooked up. Okay, so with a fuel gauge at the lowest, it is reading 13 ohms. Okay, now let's go fuel gauge halfway. Fuel gauge is halfway. Now it's reading 85 ohms. Fuel gauge, fuel level all the way up. And now it's reading 100, 190 ohms. Okay? So it looks like it goes from a low of 13 to 190. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly sweep it up from empty to full and see if maybe there's a dead spot or something in there. Okay. Looks good to me. All right. And there I am, full. Okay, now let's bring it down and see if there's a dead spot. Okay. Okay, there seemed to be something there. I don't think so though. Uh, no, this seems pretty good to me. Okay, so the sweep is good. Now it looks look for any kind of damage around here. No, it looks good. And let's look at the harness and see if there's any damage in there. No, the pins look good. Everything looks cool. The float looks like in good condition. Sometimes you get a float that sinks instead of floats. That's not good. Okay. All right. Let's have a look at the car. Okay. This is the uh, 2000 Toyota Celica GTS. So with the 2ZZ engine. Okay. You access the fuel tank. Let me open the door. Okay. You access the fuel tank through the... Uh, it's basically underneath the passenger seat. Sorry. Underneath the rear seats. So to remove the rear seats, what you want to do is you want to pull with a good amount of force. You pull straight up the front, the front of the rear seat. You pull straight up. It hooks into here. 
Okay, and the back seat you can see here has uh, two 10 millimeter two 10 millimeter bolts on this side, two 10 millimeter bolts on this side, and two 12 millimeter millimeter bolts right there. Okay, and that removes the entire seat assembly. And you can see the fuel module right there. You unbolt it, unclip the fuel module. Okay, and this is what the harness looks like on the other end. Okay. All right, so the harness looks like this. Ooh, I see some, I see a little bit of stuff there. Okay, I'm not worried about that because it is those three harnesses towards the bottom is a fuel level sensor. Okay. So we'll inspect the wiring is good, and you can see the wiring comes along here, runs along the floor, runs runs through here, and it goes to the body control computer. Okay, so you can see the wiring runs along the tunnel through here and goes to the BCM. That is the BCM. The BCM communicates with the instru instrument panel cluster or what Toyota calls <laughs> a combination meter via a data communications line, okay? So what I found was um, it doesn't look like this wiring was modified. Um, I'm looking for things like this. You can see where this wiring has been messed with. This was not messed with. But what I did find is I found that this plug was loose. Okay, when I did the wiggle and shake test, this plug here was not clipped in properly. So that may have caused the problem. All right. Okay. Now, the here's the fuel module, fuel sending unit, whatever you want to call it again. And to me, the fuel sensor, the fuel level sensor does not look like a serviceable part. I'm not sure. Um, I think you have to replace the whole fuel module, which looks, <laughs> looks really expensive. Okay. Now, I have it plugged into the wiring harness, you can see. And let's do a function check. So right now, it looks like almost full. So let's check what the meter is doing here. You can see here that it's almost full. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to raise this thing up the rest of the way, make it completely full. Okay, there it is full. And you can see that it went up one more bar. Now, what I found interesting is, check this out. When you move this down to halfway, so that's about halfway, the meter, uh, the, the gauge goes down really slowly. It loses a bar at a time. It just goes down really slowly. Okay, there you go. All right. So we're approaching roughly half there, and then at some point it's going to stop. There. It'll probably stop there. Okay. So I raised it a little less than half. Okay. So we'll stop there. Now, if I bring it down more, so have a look at where it is. You can see the meter slowly going down. Okay. What I find interesting is check this out. I got two bars left on the meter. I don't know if this is normal or a problem. If I put this thing down all the way, okay, now it's down all the way. Okay, so maybe a liar. It worked this time. <laughs> Sometimes when I put it down all the way, like it, it, it kind of sticks. Let's try this again. I'm gonna bring it up halfway. 
or maybe a maybe a little more than a third. Okay. And let me bring this down the entire way. Okay, let me bring this down the entire way. And I was testing it last night and it kind of stuck. Okay, now it's down the entire way. All right, so <laughs> it seems to work. Oh no, there you go. It's not going down anymore. Check it out. So now this is on completely empty fuel, which basically will never happen. You're never going to be completely empty of fuel. And you can see here that it does not go down any further. Now check this out. If I bring it up slightly, bring it up slightly. Okay, now you will see it go down. Okay, so I find that kind of interesting with the Toyota, how Toyota designed the fuel level sensor and the programming that the comp side people would have done to make this work. And there you go. Okay. So there you go. I figure someone on the internet needs information on the fuel level module, the body control computer, that red thing, and the fuel gauge.